Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AMP and our healthcare professional interviews. Today, I'm here with Tim, who is a clinical laboratory manager, and we have three questions for him today. So first question is, what education and experiences do you need to get this role? Um, thank you. So my role in, in leadership is a little bit different than the people I lead. Um, and I really kind of want to talk about the clinical laboratory scientist position. Um, those are the people that actually do the laboratory work. Um, in order to become a clinical laboratory scientist, there are two different educational pathways. Uh, there is a four-year degree, um, which is a specific program called clinical laboratory scientist, um, which takes you through, you know, a typical four-year degree program where you get your background um, classes, your general ed classes, um, and then specific classes that teach you how to be a clinical laboratory scientist. Um, included with that educational pathway is a clinical rotation in which you spend, uh, depending on the program, um, three to four to five months in a clinical laboratory working side by side with clinical laboratory scientists, learning how to really um, uh, put into play the the what you've learned in school, put it into action in real life so that when you graduate, you are uh, primed and ready to 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 do the work. Uh, the second pathway is a two year degree and our associate's degree. That is a program called uh, Medical Laboratory Technician or MLT, uh, very similar to the to the four year degree, except generally with the two year degree, the associate's degree, you don't get all the general ed classes. So when you start uh, your program, you go directly into the sciences and um, and the, the 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 teaching that will you know work for you in the laboratory. Um, along with that program, there is also a clinical experience. It's a little bit shorter, usually two months. Um, but again, same thing where you're working side by side with the clinical laboratory scientist, um, learning how to do the job and put into action everything that you've learned in the classroom. Very cool. Um, our second question is: What does your average day look like? Um, from the, the, um, bench level tech or the, the CLS or the MLT, um, our day is involved in helping healthcare professionals, uh, make medical decisions. Um, so we come in, in the morning, depending on what kind of laboratory you work in, the hours are going to vary. Um, I manage a hospital laboratory. Um, so we are 24 seven. Um, operation. Uh, so in the morning, my daytime techs uh, will come in and usually involves getting the instruments ready uh, to run for the day. Um, and then first thing in the morning is our busiest time frame because in the hospital, we do morning rounds uh, and morning draws on patients. Um, so our goal in the morning is to get all of our testing completed. Um, so that by the time the providers start coming in um, and looking for results, they can start making the decisions on the patients. Uh, then throughout the day, we support uh, the rest of the hospital. Um, again, we support the emergency department. We support other departments within our campus, like our cancer care center. Um, and our job is basically running um, clinical samples, whether it be blood, uh, fluids, tissues, um, whatever it might be, examining them and providing those uh, test results back to the providers to make those decisions. Um, as the day goes on, um, you know, second shift and third shift are kind of a repeat of the same. That's our main goal is, is getting test results out. Um, we also throughout the day have to do maintenance on our instrumentation to make sure that they're running in tip top shape so that the results we, we provide are accurate. Um, and then we do a lot of problem solving and um, um, other things throughout the day, interaction with nurses, interactions with providers um, and other departments to make sure that we're providing great patient care. Wow, sounds very jam-packed. <laughs> it is a busy day, yes. Um, and then our last question is, what is the most interesting thing or case uh, you've seen during your career? Um, you know, the one thing that is cool about this profession is um, every day can be different. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of, of interesting things. Um, you know, we've had some cases, I, I can't, I can't pick one. Um, so I'm going to give you several of the things that, that we've identified. Um, unfortunately in the laboratory, when we find something that's interesting to us, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it's a good thing for the patient, you know? So there are patients that have come into the emergency department, um, with just general, general conditions, you know, like fatigue or, or something like that. Um, and unfortunately, we can provide a diagnosis of like a, a leukemia um, or some kind of uh, bone cancer. 
um, again, which is bad for them, but we get, provide them the opportunity to get, get that early treatment. Um, we did have one patient that came in with a, the same kind of similar flu-like symptoms, and we were able to diagnose him with tick-borne parasite. Um, that he had had for several months and went undiagnosed. So we were able to help him get better. Um, we had a case in our microbiology area um, a few years ago where we isolated. There was a case where three workers were cleaning out an old um, old uh, uh, cave type area um, beneath a person's house, like a, a basement area uh, that had been infested with bats previously. Um, so as they were cleaning it out, um, each one of them um, contracted a fungal infection um, that we were able to diagnose um, on one of the patients uh, to help him get better as well. So that one was really interesting to me because it was pretty much textbook um, the way it went down with with the with the patient history and what we were able to diagnose. Um, so those are some of the interesting things that that I've seen throughout my career here. Wow, those sound really cool. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask.